further questions for the gentleman? Seeing none, thank you very much. Very good, thank you. Anyone else in the audience that wishes to speak? Yes, ma'am, please come forward. Please state your name and address. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Weinegger, 4418 Southeast Gemstown. I'm okay. Jeff's wife, who spoke first. Thanks for hearing us. I um, wanted to just address a couple of the points that um, this gentleman made. Uh, he, you addressed, or he addressed a buffer line that's pretty typical of an M1 transition from a C3 to an R1. True, we have seen that, um, but we have a very hardy, or we used to all the way to 45th Street, have a very hardy tree line. So that's not ever been something that we've been worried about as a neighborhood. Uh, we knew there would be businesses going up uh, eventually. There's in fact a Dollar General that has gone up in that red lot to the south right there next to Jake's Fireworks. So we knew it was going up, but there's again a very hardy tree line, uh, very full right now. So that was one thing I wanted to bring up. And the other thing um, that was brought up is you know, we're, uh, we understand they're high-end uh, properties. That's, that's great. Uh, one, but our, our, real, our, biggest, our two biggest concerns are that we go from doubling the traffic in our neighborhood when, when homes are built across from us, which we, we've been ready for that for years, so it's no problem. But now we'll be tripling the traffic. So we have a tremendous amount of traffic going up and back, and we have lots of little kids in our neighborhood. Jeff and I have three nearly grown and, and grown children, so we're not too worried about that anymore, but we have lots of kids in the neighborhood. We also, uh, Jeff and I also spent some time uh, a weekend or two ago at the invitation of Mr. Bernard. Um, he said, I build high-end homes, they're really nice, please go around and look at some of my properties. We did. Um, we went around to, um, if you can picture, Southeast 29th and Croco. Um, we went a little bit north of that. Jeff, help me out with the street name on Taurus, so that's going to be like at one of those connector streets between the um, somewhat new neighborhood off of Croco and about between 21st and 27th or so, and then the existing Aquarian Acres back there. So those are some connecting streets. We did take some time to go back there, and he's right, the homes are a, a nicer um, quality home, which is great, but the very first thing we saw were um, just very poorly kept yards. Um, the condition of the yards, the gravel between the driveway, um, lots and lots of weeds. Um, and, and Mr. Bernard did tell my husband, he said, I take care of the lawns and the snow removal and all that, which is great. Um, and we were excited to hear that. Um, but that's not what we witnessed out there. And so we have, I know we, the neighborhood, um, we, you know, none of us are, you know, wealthy by any means like that, but we, we do take very good care of our lawns. We try to keep the weeds at bay and all of that. So that's one challenge. So the traffic is another challenge. Um, and, um, and it's just, it's a little bit disheartening. Um, we also then took a look. Um, you saw a property piece um, on, I think, we, were we on 43rd yesterday, Jeff? Uh, we went a little bit west of... Uh, 45th in California um, onto the street that uh, is basically all rental homes. They're by levels. They do um, merge into an area where we have a few single, family, uh, single uh, dwelling family homes that are also rental, uh, and then some that are that are home owned. And you could you could tell by the signage out front for rent and whatnot. The immediate, you can look at it yourself, um, yourselves, right off of 45th in California. Um, it's just a dandelion field right from there. It's just on, on we go. And as you get down to the ones that are owned and where people are taking the time to invest, and I, I understand that. And I, we, we don't want to come across as snobby. There's not one snobby person in the, in the group out here. We, we just, we just want things to be neat and clean and tidy and all of that. And so to see um, what those circumstances unfortunately traditionally <coughs> appeared to become, it's really disheartening. And so I wanted to bring that up. Um, as far as the comment made about, you know, why didn't we do anything about the covenant? We do all, we all have our books. 
and has the covenant in there. It does talk about the structure of our homes, the pitch of the roof, the covering, the, the stone masonry and all of that on the front, even how wide our driveways are, and that's great. Um, but I guess because none of us, I don't think any of us are attorneys out of the 24 homes that are in Stonecrest. I don't know that any of us are attorneys. I don't think any of us were suspicious of anything happening for a long time. So we didn't really think about it. It just, it never came up. Since this has come up, all the books have come out. We're all talking, we're all sharing what we're finding. And, and yes, it's been a lesson learned in civics. You know, gosh, this is what we need to look for. But for now, that doesn't help us um, necessarily, unless we are able to move on a little further and see what um, the next body might do with that as far as potential rezoning, um, if you were to initiate that process. The, in the very least, we thought, well, let's press on. Let's see what we can do here. Even if it doesn't work for us, maybe it's something that can be addressed for the future, for another neighborhood that is mostly underway, that maybe has to come to a stop, and then big changes are made. Maybe something can be done you know, to prevent that. Um, and as far as property rights that came up at the very end, I am curious about that as well, um, not being an attorney, just a teacher. Um, I am curious as to what that would look like eventually. We are prepared to go further um, and try to stand up for what we believe in as far as that will take us. Any questions? Thank you, Ms. Warniger. Any questions from the commission for Ms. Warniger? I am curious. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about the duplexes uh, in Aquarian Acres. Would yes. you by chance happen to know what those rent for? Um, those are also Mr. Bernard's, and so um, Jeff was, they were, I, he, he threw out 1,200 minimum, uh, I can't say for okay. sure, so I'm guessing it's something in that neighborhood, and then I don't know how far up from there, so. Thank you. Any further questions for Ms. Warniger? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to uh, step forward and speak? Okay. Seeing none, I'll defer to the commission for further conversation or action. Do, uh, yes, Commissioner Beck. I do think it would be beneficial if we could get a copy from staff of the covenants. I know they've been filed, so we should have access from the Shawnee County uh, group. So I would like to see those before we move it's any a fair, fair request. Since these are apparently not platted, but they're, they must have been initiated by the previous owners at some point, self-imposed or however it was deemed. There were... There was a set of uh, a declaration of regulations or restrictions. Dec declaration of restrictions is what they're entitled, I believe. Um, there was okay. a set of them recorded, and then a year later, something was changed. They were amended and recorded under a different name, but they applied to the property. They recorded with the registered deeds. Okay. I, I, I sense, obviously, with the imminent development that can occur across the street there's this isn't something that that um, at least out of respect for those that have petitioned us to give consideration to it that we should uh, indefinitely not act upon but however I want to make sure if we are to uh, to do something or to not take action for whatever reason that we do so with enough information here um, I don't know how the, all of you feel about whether or not you've heard enough to make a decision tonight or if, if um, you know, between now and the next time we were to meet, uh, we would have be properly informed in order to take action if that's, that is our wish. Um, what, are your fellow th what are my fellow commissioner's thoughts here? <coughs> Other than the covenants, what, what else do we need to know? Well, that's a good question. 
Mm -hmm. I guess mm -hmm. I would like to learn more about possible legal repercussions from uh, taking action like this on behalf of the city. It's a good point. If the commission were to move forward on something, what is our what is our standing at that point? If so, we, depending on what kind of action you take. Yeah, let's say we were to initiate action. What what could we expect? What would our how would we be represented? We technically, according to my previous conversation with Mr. Finder, we would then become the applicant if we were to. That's correct. Initiate a rezoning. I don't. And then any action taken would be get against the commission, correct? Well, I don't know whether, I, I don't know at what point um, the builders on the west side would take action. I mean, I, I, I would be speculating on what possible Understood. legal action. Understood. If, if you yeah. want to review the, the declarations and the easements, you might defer this till next month when you meet. Okay. I mean, that's one of your options. I, I would imagine, is that... Yeah. Something you would want to do is review we, before you make yeah. a decision. It'd be important, and I think it might be helpful. I don't know if there's precedence with something like this that maybe, Mr. Finder, you could. Uh, I'm, I know you've got a lot on your plate, but I don't know if there is any other something that we at least have a roadmap of what happens when the should should in a circumstance like this, when petitioned, mm -hmm. the planning commission take action and become an applicant in a case like this. What is the roadmap? Uh, so that we're clear as to what we're, um, if this is our intent, mm -hmm. uh, if it's not, obviously it's, <clears throat> but should it be our intent, what are we, what are we committing ourselves to? So, well, and I would like, I would like a fair assessment of what the risks are involved, both mm -hmm. pro and con, mm -hmm. because that's our job to balance risks. I'm sure, you know, if somebody wants to sue, that's fine with me. I just want to know how sure I am. <clears throat> Absolutely. I don't like to make decisions because I'm afraid of a lawsuit. I want to make a decision because it's the right and legal thing to do. Well said. <clears throat> Other concerns, observations? My, my only question, the covenants deal with basically the, what the limitations are in terms of the appearance of the exterior of the building. It doesn't address whether it's a duplex or not. And if you, you know, we can find out how the design could could be established, but if the real issue with the current homeowners is duplex, then that's a waste of time, I think. Could be. Well, and, and I, I agree with that comment. I guess my argument uh, for seeing the covenants is we haven't seen the covenants. We don't, yeah. we don't know exactly what they say. We just know what's been represented to us. Not that I believe everybody who spoke here tonight, but um, I would like to see them. Um, I would agree with what's been said by the other commissioners that I would just like more information on the process and what, you know, if we decide or if the governing body decide to initiate rezoning, where does that leave the property owners on each side of the street uh, as far as their options go at that point? So um, I guess I would, I don't feel comfortable tonight voting to initiate a rezoning of the property, but I would like more information. So, my two cents. Okay. I may just yeah, follow up back. with that. You know, the, mm -hmm. the document that I want to see is not, uh, is not a waste of time to me simply because this is an important decision, I think. It's something that's not done every day. It's something that has ramifications one way or the other. So any piece of information that me as a community, uh, Councilman, or uh, councilman, excuse me, kind of, uh, commissioner, that's what I am, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, any piece of information that I can gather to make my decision, I think, is, is worthwhile to investigate and have all of my T's crossed and I's dotted before I go out there to do something that's a little bit of uncharted territory in this neck of the woods. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Commissioner Woods. Right. Quick question, you know, and this probably should have been addressed when the uh, property owners or the residents were speaking earlier. I'm curious, really. I just want to make sure I understand the crux of their opposition. Uh, is it primarily the traffic issue that was mentioned, thus, you know, the duplexes, 
Or are we also talking about taking care of property and the, you know, having it, them being rented out? Um, which, which is the real issue? I mean, I, that's a great question. I, I personally, I think I heard all three were the I did concern. too, mm -hmm. but I'm curious which, uh, intuitively you automatically think, uh, it's more of an, an issue with rentals. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can definitely see validity for all three sure. those reasons. Okay. I just want to make sure I understand. I'm, are you asking that we take an action to get your answer there, or are you? Nope, just tossing it out there. And actually, if if it would be okay if one of the folks in the would, audience would could answer like that question. Would you like to have someone specifically come up and answer that? Yeah, the, um, Ms. Weiniger, who came up and actually lined those, you know, outlined those three. Ms. Weiniger, could we, for us. could we ask you to come back? Or, or Mr., husband? I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Either or. I was on the outside. It was easier. <laughs> um, Mr. Wanager, are you comfortable? Or what his question is? He's he's basically asked several reasons were discussed with no preference or prominent one deliberated. Yeah, I, yeah. I just I want you to contextualize for me so I can better understand. That's a, it's a great question, um, and it, and I don't know that it's. As we look at it, right, we see them as they're all kind of tied together. But but I think one of the biggest things that we're concerned about is uh, de the devaluing of our property. Mm -hmm. um, um, with rental property duplexes being built directly across the street from us, um, but the other ones are very closely tied to that as well too. I mean, uh, I think my wife said it, um, and I think I I said it as well too. We've been into some of these other neighborhoods. Um, that have the rental property and unfortunately they're not kept up. Now mm -hmm. we can probably point to other areas of the city as well too that where homeowners own homes and they don't take care of them. Um, that's not the case in our subdivision. Uh, there is not a yard uh, that is not, I would say, border on immaculate, you know, when it comes to taking care of the grass, the landscaping, um, mowing it, uh, that's, that's not an issue. Um, so we, we are concerned. If, if the value of our property going down, but the other ones, the, the traffic in the neighborhood, um, you know, the transient population that come with rental property versus, like I said, we've only had one family uh, out of all the homeowners on our side of the street uh, that wasn't an original, and unfortunately that was because of a divorce and they had to move, and yeah. now the other family's there and has invested significant money into their property, um, you know. So. I, under, I understand it, and thank you for answering my question. I, sure. Just to allay any concerns, there wasn't any judgment buried in that question. No, I, I just I wanted don't. to make sure I understood. <laughs> no. uh, I'm out there digging dandelions by hand, so I have enough, you know, <laughs> an aversion to dandelions. Some people might like dandelion soup. I don't know, but I have a, a follow-up to that, just because sure. you mentioned the property values a couple times. Um, we've been given an example neighborhood here, 44th in Michigan area. Has anybody compared how the property values of the duplexes versus the single family homes in that area compare to maybe your area or to each other or anything like that? I, I haven't. Um, what little time I was able to kind of spend on the website, I was able to determine this. The duplexes were there first. And then somebody chose to come in and put single family homes across from the duplexes. Based on what I can tell from the city website, the majority of those single family homes that are across from the duplexes are rental property because it has a name and then an LLC behind it. Um, and they look like rental property from a yard standpoint, stuff out in front of the homes, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. So I think that might be something worth comparing as well. Maybe, I don't know, information. If we're, you know, if that's the major concern is property values, maybe we should compare a similar neighborhood and see how that's been affected one way or the other. I get your point though, that the yeah. duplexes were there first in that case, but. And, and I, I don't, like I said, I'm not a realtor or anything else. I, I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody that feels our property values are going to go up by building duplexes and doubling <laughs> the amount of folks in, on our street um, or tripling, I guess, if, if you look at it that way. So. I have a question. Sure. If, if, this, if those lots are rezoned to single family, 
and they are backing up to a C3 district. And they, what was your feeling be if those houses are not as equally as nice or as attractive as yours because they have to be built at a lower price so they can sell them because they are backing up to a less desirable area? You know, I, I think one of the things we, we still want to see in built <laughs> to, the, to the restrictions, um, covenants that are, that are there. Um, I, I know that um, off of 29th, uh, just west of uh, Croco, uh, you do have some single-family homes that butt up against residential property, so it's not unheard of to have that happen. Um, there's a little bit of space or a buffer that's in here. Uh, in talking to Mr. Bernard, he had, I'm taking his word, he told me that there was a buffer between the back of the property that he owns and the commercial property um, that's kind of set aside already. I don't know if that's a fact or not, but um, I, I mean, obviously we're not going to want to see any house, be it a duplex or a single family, erected in the neighborhood that potentially is going to be out of scale from the rest of the neighborhood, which I think is why the restrictions were put in place. So to be clear, though, I mean, the reality is you could you could get your wish and those could be single family homes, but they become rental property. Um, because right now they're still investment lots yeah. and multiple ones. Yeah, it, that's that's very true. And we prefer not. Right. We prefer those be single family homes that are sold, but um, we can't control that. That's correct. <clears throat> Any further questions for Mr. Weininger? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. What's the pleasure of the commission here? I would definitely be interested in pursuing uh, uh, Commissioner Beck's request for additional information and to uh, before taking any real action. Okay. Um, Mr. Hall indicated that one of our options of the three that he elaborated, even though there would probably be others, was to, based on those comments and discussions by Ms. Faney and, and others, of trying to make sure we know what we'd get ourselves into if this is something we want to pursue, to defer this decision at least till next month so that we've received all that information. Maybe we uh, better understand some of the um, comparable contrasting property values, if that's a concern. Um, and I, I concur. What are we, what kind of legal obligation do we take on, liability, what have you? So, um, and maybe we could task uh, Mr. Fall, Mr. Hall and Mr. Feyander for some clarity there on any precedents uh, and what is construed with that. So. Um, I think I would entertain a motion, uh, maybe a little more abbreviated Certainly. than that, Certainly. something simplified, so that that can occur. Certainly, I move that we uh, defer uh, any action on this decision uh, in order to give the the uh, staff time to uh, conduct further analysis and provide the commission with further uh, or additional information at the next meeting. I would second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Would, do we need to discuss this any further? Is there any further? Comments or concerns? I do have a question. Yes, Ms. Cavazos. If we go ahead and defer until later, are they allowed to go ahead then and get the permits, or is that on hold as well? I think they are. They I can know. apply they can for permits, permits, and there's yeah. no reason for uh, us to not approve the permit. Yeah. We. we Stop that. And technically, until we would apply, even if we had made a, a motion to move forward today, until we would be, like our case could be heard or what have you, couldn't they continue to move forward or would that go on hold? I mean, there, there is nothing now until, it's fine. until a decision would be made by some governing body. Uh, correct? Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, yeah, you had, the, the, someone had asked for a road map, I guess. Um, I, I think uh, let's play this out. So you come back next month and you have a decision to, let's say, initiate. Um, then we've got another, that wouldn't be, 
back before you um, until July, giving the, the month and a half that, that is required before it comes back. Um, we're not going to cut any corners on this one, so we, we follow the process, we follow the rules, and uh, come back in July if you take action in May to initiate. Uh, then it goes, and if and then if you do take action in July, uh, the best case scenario then is to, to by late, uh, you know, mid to late uh, August, it will be before the governing body for action. So you could be here by. Uh, uh, best case scenario, um, the, the the zoning would not be in place as soon <coughs> by until the end of August, <laughs> of which that time. The, anybody the is any of the, the landowners are able to come forth mm -hmm. and have their permits approved. Those permits are good for uh, six months, which is another thing to, that we would, we will uh, let you know in our information that comes back to you. But just so you know, I mean that there, this this could be a somewhat of a uh, prolonged process. And should we have, uh, in an expeditious manner, had have taken action tonight, we would have. Mm -hmm only moved that those calendar dates you stipulated up by one month correct correct so, so just to make sure I confirm mr. Fyander so in all of that time mm -hmm. permits are applied for secured construction could begin first units done <laughs> construction on the other few is, is ongoing and they're working to secure the first tenant prior to that process even coming to its conclusion? Uh, that Theoretically. Certainly, certainly uh, could play out that way, yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Any further discussion or questions of staff? <clears throat> and, and if I'm, I'll, yes, make, I'll just make one more note in your option, pack, in your option toolkit. Uh, you, you can also, you know, a potential if you did want to initiate, um, initiate to something that doesn't have to be, it, it could be a, a PUD, for instance. It could be a, a tailored initiation. So you do have options. If you, if you decide to go down that road, you don't have to stick to necessarily R1 if you feel that will help matters at all. But um, I don't want to muddy the waters too much. Uh, on the flip side, if you decide not to initiate, it stops there. So, meaning it's there is no action. You, you don't become the applicant. It does not move forward. If you decide to move forward and initiate, and you become the applicant, then this will play out all the way through to the governing body. So, just so you're aware. <laughs> and, and to be clear, if if uh, let's say that course is taken in order to. Uh, if no initiation is taken, meaning that if we elect to not even vote, is it not in a holding pattern, or do we we vote not to take an action that's basically to end it at that point? We, would a vote have to be taken to end it, Mary? Well, a vote would have to be taken mm -hmm. not to initiate. Not to initiate. Yes. Okay. I want to be clear. And, and, and commissioners, knowing that, does that alter anyone's? Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure that was where there were options. So. Okay, so any further... Uh, and, uh, before I ask that question, Mary, I, we, when I sort of let Mr. Fyander speak, you were going to say anything. Did you want to elaborate on anything there? No, I, I agree with what Mr. Fyander okay. is saying. Okay, thank there's, you. There's nothing to prevent this development from going forward okay. on the west side. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, we have a motion and a second. Chris, let's go ahead and take roll on this. Mr. Beck. Aye. Mr. Crook? Aye. Ms. Cavazos? Aye. Mr. Gales? Aye. Mr. Jefferson? Aye. Mr. Hall? No. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lackey? No. Mr. Woods? Aye. The motion passes 7-2. Uh, Mr. Feiner, I'm going to defer to the uh, language so that it's stipulated clearly for you to, to state that, if you would, please. Sure. There's a call from the crowd. The uh, motion that passed. 
uh, would be to um, defer the item, whether to initiate or not to initiate, until the next meeting, which May 18th is what I have here. That would be our next meeting. Okay. Um, we'd be back here again uh, on that Monday. And the deferral will allow uh, time to have staff put together more information regarding um, uh, legal ramifications, uh, kind of a roadmap for the process if they do initiate uh, any risks, pros or cons involved, and then also potentially looking at comparables, uh, uh, looking at property values and uh, owners and tenure patterns in comparable developments. That's what I have, and if there's anything else I missed, let me know. So the commissioners were all in agreement? Okay, yeah. since we've already voted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I hope that's what you voted. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Feinander. All right. With that, let's proceed to the last item. F2, visual code update. Mr. Feinander. Yes, uh, thank you. We'll uh, keep on... Keep, get, keep on schedule here. Uh, <laughs> last month, we talked to you about updating our visual codes for in the, in the several elements in our zoning code that we needed to come back and <clears throat> refresh, bulk up. Um, you sent us back and asked for a little more thoughts. Uh, and I, what, what we're coming back, I put a, a memo in your packet and would like to make a recommendation kind of on the sequencing. Um, right now, what we feel like of all the things that we're dealing with, that we could update the downtown zoning uh, and the design guidelines that, that come with that would probably be the, the thing that we want to uh, start on, initiate first. It makes a lot of sense because right now, the historic district downtown is going, uh, could be approved by as early as May 9th. And so with that comes immediate design guidelines. And, the more, and the, so the quicker we can move on um, uh, putting the historic district design, line, design guidelines together, which we are advancing through a couple grant processes through the city and the state, um, we, we could have a consultant on board ready to go uh, by summer. And what we'd like to do is parallel that process with, with the uh, downtown zoning des uh, design guidelines, which are found in the D1 district. Our ultimate kind of vision here would be to convert the C5 zoning to D1. D1 is a set pretty, essentially the same as C5, except it comes with design guidelines. And I, we put, a, put those in your packet. Just as an example, those are already on our, those are already in the code. Those have already been adopted. Um, what we would one to do is refresh those and um, uh, update those and go through a process with downtown property owners and, and uh, to make sure we are addressing and those address up-to-date uh, uh, up, up uh, thoughts from staff as well as the area. So we'll do a vis physical inventory. We've already started that, I believe, and, and, and move forward on a process. Um, through the rest of the year. So that's our recommendation to move forward on initially. Um, and then secondarily, the other, the other aspects are, um, we don't landscape and site plan. I have a feeling that as we conclude our pedestrian plan, there's going to be some need to update our site planning. Um, the landscape uh, ordinance also, we, we have noted several deficiencies or um, some gaps that we need to, to upgrade there. So I think I would, I would be hesitant to start any, any of that work until after the pedestrian plan. So that should be in November. Um, don't want to really start building design uh, <laughs> for the rest of the city. And so I think we come through with a good prototype in the downtown area, to be quite honest. I think that's a good, that would be a good start. Um, so I would hold off until, again, the downtown um, design standards are established and approved and everyone is comfortable with, with sort of that, that uh, uh, new aesthetic 
that we were trying to establish. Um, and then lastly, the signs. Uh, signs is sort of a one on, it, on its own. It's, it's, it's not really connected to those other three I just talked about. Um, Mike and his staff are, are actually doing some inventory of, of our sign, uh, some sign areas. Um, we, will, we can go out and do some benchmarking over other cities, uh, begin to s define the issues. In fact, I think he's already done that in some respect of where our deficiencies are in our sign code. So, um, but that's a big <coughs> project. That is a, that's a big, that's a big one. And I would like to recommend that we um, uh, clear the decks uh, with our downtown process, uh, with our pedestrian plan, uh, which we should all become by the end of the year. So my hope would be that by the beginning of uh, next calendar year that we initiate uh, a more of a public process to update our sign, sign code, which you would all be very involved in one way or the other. Um, and, and so it would take this the next six months or so to get our, um, uh, kind of do our work behind the scenes and then um, uh, just use next year for the, to initiate that process. I would, I, I'm, my, my thought off the top of my head is, is um, have some public initiation, some visual preference survey, some, some engagement that, so that the community can tell us and guide us what is the aesthetic that we, uh, they are hoping to establish in, in our sign code, uh, but then work with a team, more of a technical team of uh, with the sign industry and businesses, uh, citizens, and hopefully uh, some of your, some of the membership here to then work out, work through those details um, in an ongoing process. So that's sort of the, sort of the thoughts there. Um, I'll stand for any, any questions as you may have. Any questions for Mr. Feiner? Now you're not planning on retiring any time in the next year, are you? <laughs> Just double uh, check. It. No, that would be news. Okay, uh, but no. If you, so, if, if, yeah, no. We'll we'll uh, we'll uh, have, bring you along for the ride, and I'll be super. there with you. Well, I want to commend you for. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I would highly endorse his idea to keep the sign issue to the first of the year, since that will be after the end of my term. <laughs> <laughs> At, uh, Do Mr. We need a motion to move that up yes. <laughs> next month. <laughs> the astutely uh, observant Mr. Lackey has uh, noted that uh, Commissioner Lackey has noted that uh, if we stay on schedule, he'll be out of here by then. So I'm sure we'll be no longer deferring any of these further these items further down. So excellent. Uh, any other questions or comments for Mr. Finder? Well, my. I want to commend you for continuing to pursue these. I'm uh, obviously I think the downtown zoning is one that uh, we're definitely uh, due for. So um, I think the others are could you clearly use some um, you know further uh, dialogue and and uh, it'll be exciting to see them pursued. So um, is there any other uh, items the board wishes to address or deal with today or? If there are none, I would entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. I so move. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Super. All in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? We're out of here. I saw that. Just started that. I know. It's like this will be tested. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be happy to move